Hi, good afternoon. It's Beth with Ignited Women. So I just got back from walking around my neighborhood with a dog and can't help but to notice all of the yard signs that are up about uh, graduating seniors or graduating eighth graders or saw one even of um, someone graduating from law school. That was pretty exciting. And it got me thinking about rites of passage. Um, that there are so many rites of passage early in our lives, but yet when we get to midlife, there is no rite of passage, and there should be. So bear with me. I want to talk about this a little bit. When you think about it, um, high school graduation or even prior to that, depending on your culture and how you were brought up, um, there are, are rites of passages for women and for men, young women, like used to be the debutante balls, the coming out, you know, like announcing that a woman is, a, a young girl is stepping into womanhood. A quinceanera in many um, cultures is about the, you know, creating again, that the woman being brought forth into the world. Um, and there's several other examples of that as well. So that's kind of the first rite of passage and then there's others, including marriage, where we celebrate and, and honor it with traditions and rituals. And um, when children are born, same thing. Religious ones, rites of passages. And then the next time there's really a rite of passage is death. So there's nothing in between. And part of this is because of the shift that's occurred in how long we live. Um, I was reading the other day, uh, I would say, a, you know, a, a, a colleague, um, someone who's also really focused on aging and specifically um, wrote about midlife and the fact that her name is Barbara Waxman. And she coined the term middle essence, thinking of midlife as being like a second adolescence. And um, she talks about how there's been an increase in life expectancy since in the last 100 years. It used to be that none of us really expected to live past 47 years. So there was no, there was no reason to have rites of passage into the, into the later years of life. Um, and now that life expectancy has gone from 47 to nearly 80. It may have increased since, since she wrote that. I'm not sure when um, that information came out. So it, it, it's strange that we still think of somebody who's 65 as being old when, I don't know about you, but I have plenty of people around me who don't seem to be defined by their age and um, maybe well into their 60s and still living very vibrant lives. Um, so what happens is there's that ageism that comes in. And so we start to pull back, pull back from activities that we may have loved or given up on because we feel like, well, why should we try something new? And it takes a lot of courage to make changes. And when we're um, in a society where we're discouraged from doing anything vibrant or different um, and thought of as less than simply because of our age, then it doesn't make for a great recipe for, for moving forward into your dreams. Um, but there really are many more life stages than simply the ones that we're used to hearing about. You know, you, I, I talk often about the three phases of a woman's life, a maiden, a woman in her 20s who's seeking a life partner, and then a mother in her 30s, either uh, mothering children or mothering a career as things have shifted, um, not necessarily having children of her own, but really dedicating all of her life to something else and putting herself in a second place. Um, and then moving into either the third phase of life or the second half of life, becoming a grandparent, a steward, a mentor. I've talked about that a lot as well. And really there's uh, Barbara Waxman again, talks about that there are life phases that are based on how we perceive ourselves and where we are in our lives. And the first phase is when we're building family and focused on building our financial security. So again, it's all outward focused. And then we start to move into, okay, I am really seeking more life balance. That happens kind of in our forties where we 
may give things up or make sacrifices in what we receive financially in order to really enjoy life a little bit more maybe slowing down or taking a part-time job and then as we move into midlife it's about exploring possibilities maybe going back to old passions that we may have left behind and making a contribution to the world could also be slowing down a little bit and and taking more time for recreation or family um, whatever those is those are so life is really no longer defined by chronological age as it used to be so how do we as women in midlife how do we uh, gracefully transition from the doing getting attaining to bringing more meaning into our life that is through rites of passage so I am really excited um, about an opportunity that I have to teach a course based on the book the second half of life I have a copy of it right here I don't know if you can really see it in in on the screen um, it's a beautifully written book by um, Angelus Arian and she speaks of eight gates and the gates represent you know something a passageway and something that you have to go through um, and maybe it's passing a test to get through it or or uh, leaving something behind as you pass through it but these eight metaphorical gates are a way to help usher us into this era of bringing more meaning into our life rather than staying focused on the attaining and let it feel a little more natural um, so what are the things that we face in, in, when we turn 50 or when when we start to transition through midlife I've spoken of a few of them um, about moving more into service and becoming a steward um, and a mentor but it's also about you know if you're if you're talking about retiring or shifting your career what are you moving from and what are you moving to what's going to keep you engaged in your life and know help you to know that you're leaving a legacy and then of course there's something that nobody really is talking about is all the natural changes in the body that are occurring as you're transitioning through menopause and through midlife at the same time you're 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 experiencing this spiritual transformation um, and that's I think what Barbara Waxman really speaks eloquently about that midlife transition or as she calls it middle essence is very similar to adolescence going through hormonal um, changes fluctuating hormones wondering what you know what are the possibilities for the for the for the future um, you know feeling disconnected from where you were but not really connected yet to something new um, and there are other similar similarities that she speaks of um, that I go into a lot when I'm um, again teaching this course about the eight gates of wisdom and an another area that shows up um, after you turn 50 I remember uh, just a month before I turned 50 course getting the inevitable AARP invitation to join in the mail and I'm like oh my gosh is that our rite of passage getting you know invited to get discounts and more life insurance and how to take care of your grandkids that seemed to be you know that seems to be the one um, and of course all we hear about are age deprecating you're over the hill um, you don't look the way you used to you're slower you're not up to speed with what's going on in the world and so it's all the negativity that comes into it and I want to help to shift that um, also when you're turning you know uh, going through midlife you start to focus a little more on um, that you're further you're more than halfway along in your life and you're closer to death as you know moving towards death just natural process um, or you may be uh, around people who are experiencing death or it may be a death of your loved one or someone else uh, um, close to you so what are these tools that we can use 
to help bring us into a deeper sense of connection rather than giving up and just staying where we are and tolerating um, a life of mediocrity. As I mentioned, um, I'm going to be teaching two online, I'm calling it the Ignited Women Book Club. I'm going to be teaching two sections of that this summer through uh, the Cabrillo College Extension Program. I'm quite excited about that because it's, of course, going to be opened to anyone throughout the country or throughout the world, really. I'm opening, I'm having one section at 6 p.m. Pacific time and then another section at 4 p.m. Pacific time so that those who are on the East Coast will have an opportunity to be a part of it. And what we're gonna do each week is explore one of the gates. And the gates uh, range from talking about things like moving into possibilities, about um, the changing environment of our, or the changing view of our bodies, of our health, of our sensuality, our sexuality, how, um, we, how we navigate through all of that. And so these gates are archetypical, uh, archetypical that's, a, that's a mouthful, um, passageways from where we are into where we're going. And um, Angelus Arian, again, in this beautiful book, she it was a cultural anthropologist. So she brings in a lot of different um, cultural aspects that we explore and also go into some rituals, some guided visualizations, some rich discussions, a little bit of artwork. It's a little challenging to do that in an online format, but I'm getting some creative ideas about how to do that. Um, so I really wanted to invite you, if it's something that interests you, it's one hour a week. The chapters are short, probably 10 to 12 pages. Um, and again, I, I've taught this course three or four times already a, in a live environment, and I think that it really lends itself well to a book club. And it's also a way to connect with other like-minded women who may be experiencing the same things that you are. That is also a great resource for us to allow ourselves to, to support and hold each other through all of these transitions. And I know that we don't walk through life, um, you know, completely focused on the fact that we're midlife, that we don't, you know, carry that in front of us. I don't even think about it. Sometimes I forget how old I am and then I'm reminded either subtly or, you know, through just not being able to do things in the same way that I used to just means it's a little different. Um, and so what I really enjoy about it is the richness of having people with different backgrounds and different experiences coming in and sharing together as much or as little as you want. So um, again, I'll put the information in the bio and, uh, and in the information below on how to register. There is a discount. There's an early bird discount going on until June 12th. So take advantage of that. Take advantage of getting, I think it's $15 off of the, the normal registration price. So might as well, you know, dive in and all you'll need to do is buy the book and we'll be ready to go. We start on in, uh, I think the second or third week in June, the 16th or the 15th, depending on the Tuesday and the Wednesday of that week. Um, so this, we can restore and renew and really reveal parts of ourselves or awaken parts of ourselves that may have gone dormant. And what a better way of finding, um, uh, you know, experiencing this in an organized fashion that makes you really own the, the beautiful spiritual shift that occurs. I really hope that you can join us um, during this great opportunity. And I will share a little bit more about some of the gates in a future post. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye for now.